Our movement is the most important part of effective freestyle, but as a result, it's also one of the most difficult to implement. With the majority of propulsion coming from your arms, it's therefore essential to be able to understand it and perform it correctly. So let's take a look at the correct freestyle arm movement. Before we break the stroke down and dive into this, a quick reminder to click on the globe and the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new videos as they come out. Well, now to look at the stroke. And in theory, you could break the freestyle stroke down into as many as six parts. In theory, three parts for the recovery phase and three for the propulsion. But obviously, they're all interchanged and one runs straight into the next. Therefore, each part of the stroke will affect the next. So with that in mind, we want to make sure we perfect each one individually. So today, we're going to be breaking the stroke down and working out what you should be doing for each aspect, what you need to avoid, and in order to make it all right when it gets put back together. Obviously, the freestyle stroke is continuous, but for this video, we need to break it down and choose somewhere to start. We're going to begin with the extension phase. So once your hand has entered the water, your hand and arm needs to continue to extend or reach out in front of you before you can move on to the next phase. And for this, you want your hands to stay nice and relaxed, so your fingers just ever so slightly apart. But you are trying to reach as far forwards as you can in this relaxed manner. So your hand will be leading the movement and it'll be ever so slightly beneath the water surface and just slightly beneath your forearm, which will be ever so slightly lower than your shoulder. So it's a very mild downward trajectory just under the surface and making sure that you don't go over the center line. From the extension, you move directly into the catch. And like we said, there are no pauses. And this is an element of the stroke where you really need to concentrate on making sure the movement remains continuous. And the catch is actually the first element of the stroke that is propulsive. So it's going to start to move you forwards. And this is why it's vital. You're basically setting up, you're handing your forearm into the best position to be able to get hold of that water, which you're then going to use to propel you for the rest of that stroke. So a cue you've probably heard before is to imagine that you're actually reaching over a barrel. So from that extension element, you're then going to start to very slightly break the wrist and more so the elbow as though you're reaching over something that is round in front of you. And this will then open up the surface area of the palm of the hand and that forearm for the purchase on the water. And it's really key to try and focus on your elbow staying nice and high. It's a really common mistake at this phase to drop the elbow. So really concentrate on that element. This first part of the propulsive phase is really key because it's setting you up for the rest of the stroke. So with that in mind, you need to make sure that you don't rush through the catch. Now for the key propulsive phase, the pull. This makes up the majority of the arm movement underwater and it obviously runs straight in from the catch. And once you've got hold of that water, you need to make sure that you maintain this high elbow we mentioned throughout the whole pull phase. And a good way to picture this is think that you've got that water under your forearm and under your hand. And instead of pulling it past your body, think of your hand almost staying still, the resistance of the water that is caught and your body moves over the top of your hand. And the whole way through this movement, as your arm does move past your shoulder, and towards your hip, the elbow must stay high and that will allow you to keep hold of that water, keeping the large surface area for the maximum propulsion. Now this is combined with rotation, so you'll naturally find that this shoulder will be lower in the water than the recovery shoulder and this will allow you to engage all of those large muscles, not only the muscles around your shoulder but also your lats, the really big side muscles. And this phase needs to not be rushed. If you, as soon as you start to rush it and think, the quicker you move your arms, quicker you'll go, actually you'll lose the water and you could end up going slower. So make sure once you've got hold of that water, you allow this process of the pull to happen. The finish. Now we haven't finished the video. This is the final part of the propulsive phase 
of the stroke. So leading straight on from the pull and basically a continuation of the pull. It's just that latter aspect. So you've gone from keeping that elbow high and that catch through there. And then once your elbow actually reaches back towards your body, you've got to finally extend your arm down so your wrist actually gets towards your hips. And that is that final push phase when you're just pushing that last bit of water out behind you. And this actually speeds up slightly in the stroke, getting ready to move into the recovery phase. And now we move on from the finish to the recovery phase. And like all the aspects, this needs to flow very smoothly. In fact, you actually want to carry some of the momentum from the finish into that recovery. And the other key point is to have everything super relaxed. It's the shoulder muscles that will actually be working at this point, but you'll see the elbow start to come out of the water first. So if you've got everything relaxed, you think you're working your shoulder, there'll be a natural slight bend in the elbow at the start of the movement. Now beyond that, how your recovery looks is actually quite up to you and it's really not too structured. The key point being it's relaxed and comfortable because you just want to get your arm over the top of the water and back past your head in the most efficient way possible. And you'll see some swimmers having a really high elbow in recovery, others with a straight arm. And it's not like the underwater phase where we're gonna be really precise on what it looks like. Here, it's about keeping that momentum, keeping it smooth and making it easy and comfortable for you. Well, the final part of the puzzle, the hand entry. We're basically back at the start, or almost, and this is as it sounds, it's your hand going back into the water before the next element can start. And you've come from that relaxed arm and relaxed hand in the recovery phase, but you still want your fingers to be pointed enough that they enter the water first. And you want to think about making the minimal amount of splash so you're not causing resistance with that while still keeping it relaxed with fingers first, followed by your wrist and then your elbow. Imagine it's all going through one hole and you want this to be going happening just above your head not reaching out too fast so your hand slaps down but also not going into the water too early just wherever is comfortable for your shoulder and you can combine this with the rotation as your hand comes forward making sure again that it just goes in above your shoulder not across the center line and equally not too wide there's obviously a lot to think about six different elements in fact but when you're swimming, just try to work on one or two at a time and then move on to the next. And your brain cannot compute all six for every stroke rotation. So maybe if you identify one or two that you think need more work for your stroke, go and focus on those. Well, good luck with putting it all back together and with your freestyle progression. And if you didn't do it at the beginning, remember, do give us a like and click on the globe.